verse number four. If you turn there with me, John chapter nine, and verse number four. Say amen when you got it. Amen. This is Jesus speaking. He says, I must works, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And as another scripture, I'll, I'll read this. You don't have to turn there. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's a scary scripture to me. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth, everybody say, he that doeth, he that doeth. doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. People are good at lip service, but God is looking for someone who will do his will. Amen. Tonight I want to talk to you about kingdom focus, the will of God. Amen. Come on, let's lift our hands and with that same energy that we just got through worshiping God, why don't we go to him in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you here tonight, Lord God, uh, that you are Lord of all, Lord God. You reign on high, Lord Jesus, oh God. Uh, you look down low, oh God, and you pull us out of the muck and the mire, oh God. You pulled us out of darkness into marvelous light. So we thank you here tonight for your sacrifice, uh, for your love and mercy and kindness toward us, oh God. And I pray right now, God, uh, that your word would go forth and challenge and convict hearts, Lord God, to pull us in and to draw us closer to you, oh God. Uh, do what you will in this service, oh God. Uh, have your way amongst your people, Lord God, uh, as we give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and the praise. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, somebody clap your hands unto God uh, and shout amen unto the Lord. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Uh, give him an apostolic praise. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to start off making a somewhat controversial statement that you might not like, but it's the truth anyhow. The American dream is not the kingdom dream. Hello, somebody. In America, we have arguably the best system of government that has ever existed on this earth. Thank you, Jesus. We are a constitutional republic. We're not a democracy that's a mob rule. We're a constitutional republic. The government exists simply to protect the rights that was given to you by God, the Constitution says they're inalienable, meaning that government didn't give them to you and government cannot take them away. Praise God. This system is not by any means perfect, but it has been the framework to propel our society in America to the status of living that we enjoy today. You can go to the grocery store and get pretty much anything that you want because you live in America. You can turn on your faucet and have hot running water because you live in America. Praise God. You can have electricity running to your house because you live in America. You can start your own business and become a billionaire from nothing because you live in, in America. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to be happy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We, we are Americans, and so that's, that's ingrained into our blood that we are free. We fought for our freedom. We continue to fight for our freedom. And at any time someone comes to take our freedom away, the American spirit rises up in people and they begin to fight and protest and whatever have you because that is what America was founded upon. But it is not the idea that the kingdom of God was founded on. In America, we can achieve life and liberty in the pursuit of happiness, especially if you watch the Will Smith movie. Praise God. We can do it by our own work ethic and determination. Many people call this the American experiment because it was just that. No other government before America had this type of government. Monarchs and kings ruled by absolute authority. Prime ministers and other different types of totalitarian governments took over, but America was different. But as much as the American dream had positive results related to it in that you can start your own business, you're free to worship, you're free to speak as you will. You have lots of freedoms related to it, but it also has some drawbacks. And a particular drawback is that towards the child of God. The American dream is really the idea that you are free to work and build your own kingdom. So long as you don't violate anyone else's rights. But the child of God is not to be focusing on building their own kingdom. But we are to pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. It's a different mindset than this American kingdom and this American dream. Praise God. 
This means as born again saints of God, we should not be living for the kingdom that we are building here on this earth. But our number one priority should be the kingdom and the will of God. I'll say that again. We should not be living for the kingdom that America has allowed us to build up on this earth. We should not be living to build a bank account or to get real estate or, or to build a Fortune 500 business. And those things are great. If you have them, God bless you. Pay your tithe and offering. But at the end of the day, none of that will matter when Jesus Christ cracks the sky, comes riding in like a cloud, praise God, and calls us up from the ground to meet him in the air. Praise God. How many businesses you had won't matter at that point. And how many houses you had or how big your house was won't matter. It won't matter if you drove a Tesla or a BMW or even a go-kart. It won't matter when Jesus cracks the sky. My God, we are not to be so focused on building our own kingdoms that we neglect why God called us out of darkness and put us into marvelous light in the first place. And the danger of this American dream is that it steals our focus and puts it on the wrong kingdom. Praise God. We feel a righteous indignation when it comes to our stuff. My happiness. My will. and My idea. Not understanding that it was your will that got you into sin. That it was your ideas that brought the addiction to your life. And it was your own choices that put you in darkness. Praise God. Uh, the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It was your own thinking uh, and your own ways that prompted Jesus to stop off the throne of God. Uh, robe himself in flesh uh, and come and die in your state uh, because of what man did. Praise God. Uh, so now we can't live by our own will anymore. We got to say not my will but thy will be done. Oh, praise God. At the end of the day, when the Lord comes, nothing we have built on this earth will matter. The hope that we have in this resurrection will not include things or status that you have. God is not resurrecting Bitcoin up with you, praise God. God is not resurrecting houses up with you. You won't find your house meeting you in the air, praise God. He praise God there won't be just there'll be black saints uh, and white saints caught up just the same uh, so it won't matter what color you are uh, there'll be rich saints uh, there'll be poor saints caught up just the same uh, so it won't matter what money you have uh, hallelujah you'll be caught up from the east uh, and from the south so it won't matter what side of town that you lived on praise God uh, if your kids are saved they'll be caught up too so it won't matter if they have the latest toy uh, or the latest gadget uh, none of that will matter praise God uh, the experiences that you weren't able to give them uh, it will not amount uh, to what God has in store uh, for all them that are bought with his blood uh, called by his name uh, filled with his spirit uh, and on their way to glory we've got to get our focus uh, in the right place yeah. hallelujah Jesus. Yeah. praise God I said I wasn't going to be long so I'm going to keep my word tonight praise God when you're born again you're born into the kingdom of God Got to get you to understand that. There is a kingdom of God that exists and it's at work right now. And if you're born again, you're in the kingdom. John 3 and 3, 7 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And then Jesus said this, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of what? Come on, apostolics, you know it. What? Water. And what? You cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He said that was born of flesh is flesh. Somebody pinch your neighbor and say that's just flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must, not might, not maybe, but you must be born again. This is a prerequisite to entering uh, into the kingdom of God. Praise God. It's not just about saving you from something. It's about putting you into something. Praise God. Uh, this is why being born of the water and spirit is so essential and a focal point right here at New Life Tabernacle of South Tampa. I'm going to tell these people exactly what they need to do. And the first step uh, is you must be born of the water. Baptized 
rising waters, uh, immersion uh, with the name of Jesus called up over you. Uh, and as you go down in that water, uh, there'll be a remission of your sins. Uh, praise God. Uh, and Peter said, and you shall receive uh, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and when you receive it, you will speak with tongues. Uh, when that happens, uh, you have been born not into this world, uh, not by your mother's womb, uh, but you were born uh, by the womb uh, of the church uh, that came forth miraculously by the blood and water of Jesus Christ. Uh, my God, uh, we are not of this world. Uh, God just put us in this world. Uh, but there will come a day uh, where the kingdom of God will manifest. Uh, the sons of God will be made manifest. Uh, and this incorruptible uh, shall be made incorruptible. And this mortal shall put on immortality. And we all shall be changed. Uh, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, uh, God will be revealed uh, in us. Somebody said, I've been born again. Oh, praise God. Um, that means that I'm not letting anybody that's not born again tell me uh, about the kingdom of God. Everybody got an opinion, Brother Ben. Everybody said, this preacher got an opinion. That preacher got an opinion. They don't even believe in speaking in tongues. They didn't want to tell you about the kingdom of God. And Jesus already said, unless you're born again, baby, you can't tell me nothing. And this was a Pharisee that said this. He knew all the law, back and forward. Could probably quote most of the first five books of the Bible. And Jesus said, you don't know nothing. You can't see it. Your intellect can't get you there. Your power can't get you there. Your flesh can't get you there. You got to be born by something external to you. Praise God. Born into this thing. That way I can perceive and know what is the will of God. How is somebody that don't have the spirit of God supposed to be telling you what the will of God is? Prophet is so and so and so and so going to tell you what the will of God is. No! Get on your knees. You got the Holy Ghost. Find out from God for yourself. Hello, somebody been born into the kingdom which comes with its own implications it means that i am a child of god first oh this is a sticky one right here this world wants to attack us first of all <laughs> people get mad if you don't support the right things if you're black <laughs> what you mean you don't support this i ain't got nothing to do with my color i've been bought by the blood of jesus i'm a child of god first First, you're going to find me marching in the street. That's not my kingdom. You're not going to find me out there protesting, Brother Reggie. It's not my kingdom. That's not the kingdom I was born. I don't know what kingdom you're born into. <laughs> in this one video, this black guy from uh, Congolese. He was Congolese. He was in Ukraine, though, because they go there for school and all that. And, you know, they were stopping all the men coming out of Ukraine, trying to get them to fight for Ukraine. And they stopped him. It was hilarious. He's like, fight for Ukraine. He said, I am black. I'm not fighting for Ukraine. They will see me and think I'm NATO and shoot me first. <laughs> he laughed. Why? That ain't his kingdom. Some of y'all getting involved in the wrong fights. And you wonder why you're frustrated. Picking up everybody that got a cause, you're just going to pick it up. We fighting for the dolphins. We fighting for black people. We fighting for white people. We fighting for this. I bet you fight for the lost. See, I told you it gets sticky right here. Because, again, we got that old American spirit. I'm a freedom right man. Who told you that? The kingdom of God is America? What? Come on, somebody. I'm a child of God first. I don't belong to any social identity that you give me. Praise God. I don't belong to any horoscope identity that you. People say, are you Aquarius? Hey, no, I'm not no Aquarius. Don't you put that curse upon me. And if you're reading that mess in the newspaper, burn up the newspaper. You are a child of God. Your destiny is orchestrated and ordained by God and him alone. Not by a pattern of stars according to whatever demonic month you subscribe to. I'm no Aquarius. That's foolishness. I am a child of God. Wonder why you're having nightmares. You got all kind of witchcraft and horoscopes in your life. You better get rid of that junk. You're inviting devils up in your house because you're identifying with the wrong kingdom. Touch not the unclean thing. Secondly, it means that I'm expected to live by a different set of rules than my past life. You go to another kingdom, they got different rules. When we, my, we and my wife got married, we had grandioso ideas. We wanted to have our honeymoon in Dubai. Praise God. Ooh, yeah. $6,000 just for the flight and hotel. Just boom, gone like that. Uh, needless to say, we didn't do that. Praise God. I'm glad we didn't either. Thank you, Jesus. But in Dubai, you know, in America, you can just go to the beach however you want to. But in Dubai, they will arrest you and put you in jail. If you go to their beach and you have on the wrong attire that is too revealing and ain't nothing your American self can do about it. 
Matter of fact, somebody in the Britney Griner is in the news right now. She was smoking a vape pen, and she plays for the Russian women's basketball team. And they locked her up, and they put her in jail. Because you might be able to do that over here. But over there, that don't fly. And you'll be amazed at how many people come into the house of the living God and think that somehow the same rules apply to them from out in the world as over here. And wonder why I'm not getting anywhere now that I've been born again. I'll tell you why. Paul said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye renewed by the transforming of your minds. Trans Praise God. Transformed by the renewing. I'm dyslexic today. Praise God. It's a Hawaiian mindset. They're like six hours ahead of us, behind us. Praise God. So when y'all were having service at 11 in the morning, it was 5 o'clock in the morning. Praise God over there. <laughs> you got to be renewed, somebody say. You can't come with your old mindset. You can't come with the old hood mentality. Leave the hood over there. Leave the hood over there. Leave the ratchet folk over there. Leave that stuff. Leave the club over there. You've been called out of that. So even, that's why Paul said it's got to be renewed. That means even the way that I thought is wrong. Praise God. And God knows it's not enough just to have a set of rigid rules. I've got to change the way that you think. The pattern of your mind must change. And look what he said. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That means there's no way you're doing the will of God until your mind is changed. Oh, you don't know about me, Pastor. Back in the day, I would have hit them straight in their throat. Well, okay, that was the old you. But old things have passed away, and all things have become new. So you need to put that old man, the Bible says the former conversation, let that go. Stop stealing. Stop lying. You're not in that kingdom anymore, my God. Hallelujah, Jesus. My God, people misunderstand that and think that just because there's blood uh, that you're free to do whatever you want to. No, no, my friend. You misunderstand the kingdom of God. Uh, you've been called out of that. Uh, and the power of the Holy Ghost was given so that you can live above that. What kingdom are you modeling, huh? When people see you, what, pe what, what kingdom do they see? Come on. Do they see the south side of Chicago when they see you? Or do they see the kingdom of God? Do they see Real Housewives of Atlanta when they see you? Well, eyelashes are so big you could blink and fly. Come on, somebody. What kingdom are you trying to model? Ladies, I'm asking you a question. When you get dressed in the morning, what kingdom are you trying to model? Huh? With the music you listen to, what kingdom are you trying to model? It should reflect the kingdom that you belong to. And Jesus said you're born into this kingdom. Praise God. That means my speech, my looks, my actions, my behavior, even my friends uh, have got to reflect uh, the kingdom that I have been brought into. I cannot continue to live the way that I was. Uh, I've got to come out of that darkness, uh, praise God, uh, into light. I've got to come out of that sin, uh, into righteousness. I've got to come out of that mess, uh, into holiness. Touch not the unclean thing, uh, and I will receive you. Come out from among them, says the word of God. Come on, people of God. Uh, we are bought with the price. Uh, we are royalty. Uh, we are peculiar people. People, a holy nation that should show forth the praises of him that's brought us out of darkness into marvelous light. People got a problem with holiness. I don't want to be all, well, what kingdom are you trying to model, huh? Are you, are you trying to look like an American or are you trying to look like a saint of God? Come on, somebody. Trying to look like a stripper or are you trying to look like a child of God? Come on, somebody. Hello, we have to be conscious of these things and understand that there's no way that we can do the will of God if we keep that old mindset. Thirdly, it means that my purpose in life is no longer what it was before I was born again. Oh, praise God. Romans 28, 28. And we know that all things, y'all probably know it, work together for good to them that love and to them who are the called according to whose purpose? My purpose? Your purpose? Your grandmama's purpose? Your wise auntie's purpose? Your crazy? Oh, no. It's his purpose, Brother Elliot. Not even your own purpose. And sometimes we get born again, huh? we get in the church, huh? and then we want to keep on doing whatever we want to do, even if it's not sin. Neglect completely the house of God. And then you find yourself after a little while getting completely discouraged, growing bitter, and growing tired. Because I don't know what my purpose is. Help us, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This scripture has a guarantee attached to a condition. It says, all things work for good 
for the people that hold the following conditions. That love God and that they are about his purpose. So if you don't love God and you're not about his purpose, there's no guarantee that what you're doing is working out for your good. Flat footed right here. No guarantee. How do I know if I love God? Well, if you love me, keep his commandments. That means every little commandment that you find yourself, follow it. That's how you know that you're loved. It's called sacrifice. And if you're about your own purpose, this stuff's not working. So you're doing some stuff, and it's working to your demise. Why can't I get a hit? Why am I not blessed? Why am I frustrated? Why am I tormented? Why I keep having these nightmares? Why can't I get any blessings? Why, why, why? Do you love God, and are you about his purpose? Because if you're not, that might be the reason why things aren't working together for good. They're working towards your demise because you're trying to live like a Russian when you're an American. Ooh, that's sticky right now, huh? Praise God. What kingdom are you trying to model? It's another stumbling block because people think they can continue by their own purpose. Cannot do that. Everybody wants the benefits of salvation, but nobody wants the sacrifice. Everybody wants to be saved, but nobody wants to be pleasing to God. I can do the bare minimum to be saved. Then you start asking questions like, is that a heaven or hell issue? What kind of question is that? What kind of question? I'll use the example before I use it again. If me and my wife are at home, and she says, hey, babe, could you pick up your socks off the floor? It really bothers me when you leave your socks laying around. Air funking, you've been out working in the yard all day. And I sprayed this whole house down with air freshener. And then you put your socks right there in the middle of the floor. Can you pick them up? What kind of response, what do you think she would think if I asked her, is this a divorce issue? <laughs> like, are you going to divorce me if I don't pick up? Love issue. It's a love issue. And we do God the same way. What do you mean cut my hair? Is that a heaven or hell issue? Hmm. Hello. What do you mean just stop? Don't be shacking up. Is that a heaven or hell issue? Now we now no no we got a heart issue right there. <laughs> you don't love God. Who thank you Jesus, which is the first commandment that Jesus said that ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Sabbath and all stuff that left, but that love God and love your neighbor that ain't going nowhere. Praise God. Matter of fact, that's the royal law of the kingdom according to First John. Go in and read it for yourself. John said, if you don't love God and love God, love you don't love your brother, love God is not up in you, and the truth is not in you either. He called you a liar. Praise God. Because ultimately it comes down to what, who do you love? If you truly love somebody, you'll give up anything and everything. What mother in here wouldn't sacrifice everything for their child? And Jesus said, if you love your son or daughter more than me, you're not worthy of me. So let me ask you, what would you not sacrifice for God? What is off limits you would never do? God asked me to do that. Sometimes we don't think it's God. It comes from the preacher. <laughs> Not understanding that since God's worked through mostly preachers throughout the whole Bible. Hello, somebody. Word of God came through the preacher because you're too carnal to hear from God. Hello, somebody. Well, is that a heaven or hell issue? No, but your heart is, and you'll be right down in the devil's hell, right along with everybody else that did their own thing. Saints and all. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. That doesn't mean, no, you can give God all the shout and all the praise and all the lip service if you want to. But if you don't love God and do his will. What's happening? Hello. Secondly, the will of God at any cost. 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. Oh, Jesus, I got to go. Kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father is in heaven. Many will say to me, I hate this scripture. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And I'll profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. It's not enough to just profess, Lord, Lord, saints of God. We must do the will of God. And the will of God might be different from every person. So you can't look at somebody else's life and determine what's the will of God for your life. Peter tried that. Jesus told Peter in so many words in John 20, you read it for yourself. Uh, he's pretty much said, well, you look, you're doing what you want to now. But when you're old, you're going to die for this thing. And Peter got in his feelings and said, well, what about John? Jesus was like, what if I will that he shouldn't die till I return? What's that to you? In other words, mind your business. Go in the prayer closet. Talk to the Lord for yourself. Get your own heart. Get your own mind right with God and make it up in your mind to do the will of God. And then maybe he'll deal with you according to your will. But we're too busy living vicariously through other people who we don't even know if they're really saved or not. Following people, you don't know if they're saved. You don't know their prayer life. You don't know their walk with God. You don't know their sacrifice. You don't know if they're givers. You don't know nothing about them. But yet they're pastoring and leading you. The devil is a liar. People have problems finding the will of God for a few reasons. I got three of them. I told you I'm in a hurry. One, very simply, they have no interest or intention of knowing or doing the will of God. I don't really care. Wake up to this morning, morning, I don't really care about the will of God for today. I'm going to do me. So you don't pray. You don't ask God about it. Come to church out of routine just because, you know, somebody told me to. Have no interest in doing the will of God. And God will leave you in that state. He said, draw nigh to me. And I'll draw an eye to you. He already did the first step on the cross. He's looking for people who have a mind and a desire for him. So many people don't know the will of God because they have no interest. And even if they knew, they wouldn't do it. Not praying, not reading your Bibles, the list goes on. Have no spiritual mind. They're essentially carnal. Secondly, they have not obeyed the simpler thing in God's will. People don't know the will because they don't obey the simple stuff. God works in steps. He has a plan. Let's look at creation. Y'all ready? The first day he did what? Created the heavens and the earth. And he said, okay, there's darkness upon the face of the deep. His spirit moved and separated light from the darkness. All right? Called the darkness night and light day. Evening in the morning was the first day. Then he did firmaments. Everybody remember that? He did the firmaments, okay? And after that, he put animals in it. Thank you, Jesus. See, fish. And he brought the land forth, right? And he brought grass and every seed yielding stuff after his kind. Then after that, he put animals on the land. Well, guess what? In this whole plan, everything is dependent upon the thing before it. You can't put the animals on the land before there's grass for them to eat. You can't put fowls in the air if there's no sky. God has a plan. He does things very meticulously. And you can't get to the last step. Until you go through the first step. Talk about Abraham. Abraham couldn't sacrifice Isaac if Isaac wasn't born. And Isaac couldn't be born until Abraham's in the promised land. And Abraham couldn't be in the promised land until he obeyed the first word that he got to get out from among his land and his kindred and his father and go to a land that I will show you of. So Abraham had to obey the first instruction to get the next instruction. And to obey that instruction to get the next instruction. And to obey that instruction to get the next instruction. And the ultimate fulfillment was sacrificing his one and only son that he loved on the Mount Olive, excuse me, Mount Moriah, where God would give him the ultimate blessing. And too many of us are looking for God's ultimate destination. But we haven't obeyed the simpler. Why am I not hearing from God? I pray I'm not hearing from God. Have you obeyed the very simple stuff that you don't even need a prayer life? You can just read this right here. You read the Bible. Thou shalt not steal. That's an easy one. Are you obeying that? Oh, look at y'all looking at me. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Are you obeying that? Let's take it even further. If you look upon a woman to lust after her in your heart, you've already committed adultery in your mind. Are you obeying that? Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Are you obeying that? 
Man should not wear things pertaining to a woman, neither woman things pertaining to a man. Are you obeying that? Don't adorn yourself with gold, mm, fancy apparel, but with ooh, righteousness and shamefacedness. Are you obeying that, ladies? But I want to know the will of God for my life. He's got a calling. He's got a ministry. He's got this and he's got this. God ain't got nothing for you until you cross step one. Look, we were shouting a minute ago. We were shouting a minute ago. Why can't I get the will of God? No, you need to get the basics down first. And then God will deal with you as you go along this journey. But you can't skip all of the necessary stuff in between and say, all right, God, I'm ready to be an evangelist. Like, you can't even pray consistently. What are you doing? Oh, come on. I just might. We was eight minutes a second ago. What happened? I give you glory and praise and all of that. Hallelujah. This is the will of God I'm talking about. And we try to skip over all the stuff in the middle. Like Jesus is a liar. No, you must be faithful and few, and then God will make you ruler over many. The third reason I observe people miss the will of God is they're not submitted to anybody. Come on, Pastor. That's me. There's a short list of people in your Bible that God spoke to directly. Noah, Abraham, Moses. Everybody else, according to my recollection, went through somebody else because his framework was already established. Isaac, Jacob, Joshua, Samuel, Saul, David, Solomon, Peter, Paul. The list goes on. All of them got their calling from some other man or woman that was before them. See, the point here is that God will test your submission to man before he trusts your submission directly to him. And if you can't obey God's delegated authority, you will not obey God directly. It's true. Hello. Hello. People look at Jesus. Jesus was 33 years old at his death. That means he was rebuking people twice his age at 30 years old. People, oh, you ain't, you ain't nothing but, I don't know, am I 36? You ain't nothing but 36 old. What do you know? Well, you probably wouldn't have followed Jesus either if you're looking at the man's age. That's right. For this cause, many people miss the will of God because they believe they don't need anyone else to, quote, validate the call of God on their lives. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. Even the Bible says, out of the word of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. God always has a check. And he always has a balance. And if you go out there willy-nilly by yourself, you'll end up caught. Thirdly, this, the will of God will cost you, but it will be worth it in the end. I love this scripture here, Luke 9, 23. And he said unto them, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross Everybody said daily and follow me. Why a cross? Do you mean I need to carry a wooden stick on my back? No. That means you know, a cross is an instrument of death, of crucifix. It means you need to die out to yourself. What is myself? My own will, my own idea, my own plans, my own ambition. I got to die to that, and I got to die to it every day because every day that I wake up is a new day that I get a chance to live for God. Every day that I wake up is another decision that I must make. And Jesus said it's not just enough to make that decision one time in one powerful service and get one breakthrough. My God, you should get a breakthrough every day when you make up your mind and say, I'm going to do the will of God today, even if it kills me. Pick up your cross daily. Follow me. For whosoever will save his life will lose it. But whosoever will lose, look at this. Jesus said, if you lose your life for his sake, the same shall save it. Stop holding on to your rights. Stop holding on to your life and go live for God. For what is a man advantage if he gained the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? My God, I told you we went to Hawaii for a vacation. And oh, my Lord, it is one of the most beautiful things. I got pictures, but I can't describe it to you. One of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. Just a mountain just coming up out and coast and all of that. Thousands of feet in the air. And the water is as clear. We saw turtles swimming and whales jumping up out the water. And dolphins went snorkeling and all that. Clouds covering. I got great pictures. It was awesome. And I'm like, my God, God created all of this. And the views and the beauty God created all natural waterfalls falling from thousands of feet just coming down boom I say man this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life but yet the fact still remains even if God were to give me all of that in exchange for my soul wouldn't be worth it brother Ellie and the devil not even offer us Kauai Hawaii. 
He's just offering you a $15 raise. Hello. Hello. There's a sacrifice to doing the will of God. Salvation is free, but doing the will of God is a sacrifice. Being a laborer in the kingdom is a sacrifice. My God. Peter even asked a question. I'm closing pretty soon. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. This is after the young rich ruler came to Jesus. This is what Peter said. We left everything and followed you. Verse 29. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man. Everybody say, no man. That have left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or even wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. He said, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. Houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, and lands with persecutions. And in the world to come eternal life. So every sacrifice that you give to God, I may not notice it, but God has got it recorded. Every time you came to church early when nobody knew it, nobody patted you on the back, God has got that recorded. Every time you took time out to teach a Bible study, God has got that recorded. Every time you were away from your family, praise God, trying to do the will of God, God has got that recorded. And he said, you're not going to outgive me. For everything that you did for me, I'm going to give it to you again a hundredfold. Oh, come on, somebody. And I'm living proof of it because I only grew up with three brothers and one half-sister that I didn't meet till I was 22 years older. But now I got one brother. I got one sister. I got another sister. I got another sister. I got another sister. I got another brother. I like this brother. Praise God. I got another sister. I like her too. I love all of y'all. Praise God. Brother John, we might not be the same color, but you're my brother. Praise God. We might not be the same gender, but you're my sister. I got all of this because I decided to sacrifice. Oh, praise God. And guess what we're doing, Brother Moan? We're taking in territory. What well, means I got more land? I got mothers. Come on, mama. Why do you think I call you mama? I'm just trying to bother you. God has given you to me and say, here, I know you might be missing time from your family. I know you might be missing time from your kids, but I'm able to bring you into a kingdom that's got all of that and even more because there's coming eternal, everlasting, everlasting, everlasting life. Is anybody excited about the everlasting life to come? Oh, let's all stand. I'm closing here. Oh, stand. Something we have glory. We got something to look forward to. My God. Oh, Jesus, help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, Holy Ghost. Everlasting life, Brother Mo. Rule and reign on this earth for a thousand years. And then there's a new heaven and a new earth coming. With heavenly Jerusalem just suspended from the sky. And we'll be able to traverse just by thought, heaven and earth. I'm going to tell you something. I did some of the craziest stuff I ever did. Hiked up the Waimea Canyons in Kauai, Hawaii. Jesus' name. Talk about uphill. I, I realized I was out of shape. Because we're, we're like, it's like a cliff and like a thousand foot drop. We're just walking. Dude, walking. If you ever get a chance to do it, I suggest you do it. But we got to this place. I got pictures of it where you can see miles of canyons and then the coast. And clear blue skies with clouds. I'm like, my God, this is beautiful. It was worth all the work. It was worth all the sweat. It was worth all of the danger and the uncertainty to get up there and to see it from that level. It was worth it all. And I'm th I got to thinking, my God, if this is just like this on earth, what's it going to be like when Jesus calls us up? And all the pain leaves my body. And my bones are not cricking no more. I don't get out of breath no more. And he brings me up way up high to meet him in the clouds where I can see all the earth and establishes his kingdom. Can you only imagine, Brother Ramon, if God can do that in his natural world, all the sacrifice, all the sweat, all the praying, all the crying, all the beefing, all the forgiving. Oh, my, that's why you got to forgive. Oh, Jesus. All the forgiving and getting rid of all my pride and ego. All of this that we go through down here is going to be worth it all. It's going to be worth it all, saints of God. It's going to be worth it all. 
Paul said, for this light affliction is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. It's going to be worth it all. It's going to be worth it all. I uh, kind of into Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies. I preach it where you're going, I promise. Another two minutes. But Bitcoin at its creation was selling for 0. 0.0008 cents. You could buy one Bitcoin for that much. Right now, the current price of Bitcoin is $42,925. One Bitcoin. So if you would have bought and sacrificed $100 in 2011, right now you would be a five billionaire. Just that small little sacrifice, Brother Ben, can yield so much. And sometimes we fuss and cuss about the smallest sacrifice that God is asking for us because we don't have a mind to comprehend what he's got in store. Because there's no person in their right mind knowing what Bitcoin is right now that would not have bought it. Took $100 and bought that right back then. Anybody? And I'm afraid in this moment, in these last days, that people are leaving the church for, in the grand scheme of things, small stuff. Because you don't have a mindset of the bigger picture. Jesus gave us the bigger picture. What does it profit a man if he gain the world? Loses. You're leaving the church because he spit on me. He didn't really spit. He might have spit on me preaching before. I don't know, praying. But I don't really know. You lose mind of the bigger picture. Let's not lose that mindset. Let's have a kingdom focus to do the will of God at any cost. On every hand lifted, let's begin to pray. If you want to rededicate yourself to God, I invite you to come to these altars. Lord Jesus, we thank you here tonight, Lord, that you called us out of darkness, Lord, and into marvelous light, Lord. We thank you here today, oh God. And in your love and in your mercy, God, and in your kindness toward us, oh God, that you saw fit to shed blood, oh God, while we were yet against you, oh God, while we were contrary to you, oh God, while we were dead in our trespasses, oh God, you shed blood for us, oh God, oh God, you did it so that we might be saved, oh God, and for that, oh God, we owe you everything, oh God, we owe you, God, even our very lives, Lord God, Lord, but sometimes we get confused, oh God, sometimes we get distracted, oh God, sometimes we get Get put off, oh God, uh, by the afflictions we have to suffer while in this current flesh, oh God. Uh, and I pray here today, oh God, uh, that you would forgive us of that, oh God, uh, for the distraction, oh God. Uh, forgive us, oh God, uh, for the things, oh God, uh, that we forsake you for, oh God. Uh, forgive us, Lord God, uh, for turning our backs from you, Lord God, uh, for you never turn from us, oh God. Uh, and I pray here today, Lord God, uh, that a renewed focus, oh God, uh, a renewed mindset, oh God, uh, would be given, Lord, uh, to your people, Lord God, uh, and we get our priorities straight, oh God, uh, and get our minds set upon you, oh God, uh, that your will, God, uh, might be done in our lives, oh God. Uh, I pray right now, God, uh, and make the declaration, Lord, uh, that we will do your will, oh God, uh, upon any cost, Lord God, uh, for we know, God, uh, the time is drawing to a close, Lord God, uh, and that you are soon to come, Lord, uh, and I pray right now, God, uh, in the name of Jesus, oh God, uh, that you call your children uh, back to the altar, God, uh, back to repentance, Repentance, oh God. Back to purpose, oh God. Back to love, Lord God. Let us love not the things of this world. Hallelujah, Jesus. But let us love you, oh God. For we know this world will burn, Lord God. And if we love this world, your love is not in us, oh God. So perfect us, oh God. Through the love shed abroad in our hearts, Lord God. By the Holy Ghost that you put in us, oh God. Draw us together, Lord God. In unity, oh God. With our brothers and sisters, oh God. Oh God, let your will be done, oh God. 
right here in South Tampa, oh God, right here in the state of Florida, Lord God, right here in this nation, Lord God, and even upon this world, use us, oh God, for your will, God, for your glory, oh God, bring it down right now, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we repent right now, God, of every selfish mindset, oh God, everything we've done to displease you, Lord God, and I pray, oh God, that you put us back on the right path, oh God, put us in a place, oh God, where we will listen to men, oh God, and obey, Lord, let your will be done, Lord God, on earth, Lord God, as it is in heaven, Lord God, in our lives, Lord God, as you will it, Lord God, not our will, Lord God, oh God, we sacrifice today, oh God, we die out today, Lord God, Saint Jesus, oh God, whatever you would have us to do, oh God, we will do it, oh God, and I pray, Lord God, that many souls be saved, oh God, I pray that many come out, Lord God, and I pray, Lord, I pray, oh God, that you come quickly, Lord. Come, oh God, right now, Jesus, oh God. Call us home, Lord Jesus. But we long to see you, oh God. We long to be like you, oh God. We long to see you, the glory of your appearing, oh God. Lord, we pray that you have your way, oh God. Let your will be done in us, oh God. Give us strength to overcome, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus, oh God. Give us peace, Lord God, in this dark and trying world, Lord God. And we'll be careful, God, to give you the glory, the honor, and praise in Jesus. Jesus' name we pray.